Okay, hi, it's Echo. This is attempt three of making this vlog because I've been trying to find a free online recorder where you don't have to log in, um, or you do, but you can just log in through Google and it just hasn't been working. So at this point, I'm just doing it on my phone. Um, and it's kind of awkward because I'm probably just going to reiterate a lot of I, what I said during the first vlog, which is like, um, God, it's so hard to talk about, but basically, um, I don't want to be a financial burden to anyone. I want to make a living wage by myself. I want to figure out how to like establish myself in this society as someone who is stable and reliable and permanent and um this current position I'm in isn't really working for me because I am not getting paid a living wage um other than that it's a pretty good job I have a lot of really nice co-workers I have a lot of free time um you know, I work at an institution that isn't, um, it is sort of like separated from capitalism, right? Which I really appreciate. So I don't want to leave this job, but if the union can't help me and if HR can't help me, if nobody can help me, I'm going to have to go somewhere else. And, you know, that really fucking sucks for me. I, I really like it here. I don't want to change jobs. I don't want to move. Um, but at the same time, I know that I do need to move on with my life. And so I've been applying for other jobs and I've been writing cover letters that sort of like paint this exaggerated picture of like the ideal candidate for any given position like you're supposed to do. Um, and, you know, I resent the charade that we have to go through to get jobs in the first place. The whole thing where you have to sort of, like, twist your weaknesses into, into strengths. Like, say things like, oh, my biggest weakness is I'm too much of a perfectionist. Or I um, want to give back to the job too much. And sometimes... Uh, I find myself like um, in a position where I'm just too obsessed with work or something. I I don't know if these are the right answers, but these are just sort of things I'm coming up with off the top of my head that I think I might hint at in a job interview if they asked about my weaknesses. Because, you know, I wouldn't want to tell them the truth. God forbid, and they don't want me to tell them the truth either. It's all a charade. It's all a test to see, can the person jump through these hoops so that we can then rely on them when we need them to jump through hoops later at the job. And, you know, I suppose that is a valid strategy. You know, I just wish that there were certain jobs where you didn't have to prove yourself and you could just be like, look, I have this degree, I have this education, I have this experience, I have opposable thumbs, I have a drive to make a living wage, I, you know, I haven't completely ruined my life yet, I'm not on heroin, <laughs> like, just hire me, just give me a living wage, because my human right is that I deserve food, water, and shelter, and that is what I'm trying to achieve, you know, and I don't know, maybe if I went and applied to McDonald's and said that to them, that they would hire me, but I have a feeling they would still think I was too weird and vastly overqualified. I have been turned down from Taco Bell because they told me I was vastly overqualified for the position and they did not understand why I was trying to apply to a fast food job. 
so it leaves you in this sort of paradox that where you're stagnant, you can't move, and everybody in your life is putting pressure on you and saying, okay, you have to, like, put yourself out there. You have to, like, um, but the, they don't really mean put yourself out there, do they? They mean put a, an image, a replica, a clone of yourself out there, the version of yourself that is perfect in every way and just would not admit under torture that they were a flawed human being. Um, I mean, you know, I suppose that's a bit, a, a bit of a hyperbole, but it does feel that way sometimes, especially when writing these cover letters that are just so fake. They're so fake. And your resume has to be so fake. I'm, and I'm not talking about actually lying in your cover letter or resume, but you do have to at least, um, you know, you can't just go up and say, I'm here because I need more money and I think I deserve better. I know I deserve better. You have to be like, I'm here because I want to give back to the community because I want to provide a above average team member for your respectable company because I want to find ways to make your company thrive. You know, you can't say, I don't give a shit about your company. I'm doing this for myself. Like, no one's going to hire someone who says that. No one's going to hire somebody who is honest. So it's just a bit of a conundrum for me. And... I guess that was the main thing I was complaining about uh, in my previous vlogs. <sighs> and it gives me these crippling anxiety attacks when I have to jump through these hoops, go through these charades, uh, navigate these obstacle co courses um, put in place by the system for me. And it's even worse if you go the other direction and try to, like, get diagnosed with a disability and try to say, I can't do my job. I can't do these things I'm being required to do. This is too much for me. Like, if you're over a certain age, they're just like, sorry, but you've gotten this far, so clearly you're doing something right later. Like, that's kind of what happened to me um, when I tried to investigate whether I had autism and um, I wasn't diagnosed with autism I was given a preliminary diagnosis for I believe pervasive developmental disability or something along those lines um, and then I was sent through a bunch of hoops uh, with like RSS and I ended up on some kind of like a stream where every single other person on the stream was a parent who was trying to help their child get the benefits they needed, their autistic child who wasn't able to do it themselves, of course, because of their autism and because they were a child. And meanwhile, I'm here like, I am in my late 20s, early 30s, like, you know, what am I doing here? Like, so I, for the moment, I am sort of dropping the whole disability thing and trying to really make it in this society, but it's not easy. And I don't think that I'm the only person that struggles with this kind of thing. I think it's a very universal struggle under our current system. And I just wanted to talk about it to kind of like see if anybody else felt that way and had any other comments and questions, concerns, uh, all that jazz. So um, that's sort of why I'm making this. And uh, if you just want to leave a comment or not, I don't really care. I'm making it a bit for me too. Um, but
part of what I want to do with this whole project is kind of like engage with the plural community and the neurodivergent community um, and form bridges and maybe even like supports uh, because I feel like a lot of us are very isolated um, in a world that doesn't cater to our needs to any capacity. Um, and that's not okay. Uh, and I've tried in the past to start like local neurodivergent group, like support groups. Um, and that didn't really work out because uh, the people who were um, at first letting us do it for free started deciding that they were going to start charging us for the space and time. So, and yeah, none of us had any money to spare. I, I don't know if we did, but I didn't want to start asking people in my support group for money. So um, that idea has sort of run its course, but um, yeah, this is sort of like my alternative to that is can I make these connections without really meeting anybody in person and just sort of like rambling on YouTube and seeing where that leads. So thus concludes the end of this video. Uh, I would be interested to hear anybody's thoughts who is also going through something similar or something different. Um, I don't feel like I particularly need any advice because I've been getting advice out the wazoo from like everybody lately. Um, and it's probably more like I just need freaking therapy, um, which I have, by the way, I have a therapist and I also reach out to a really good uh, institution called Empowerment Exchange that I would highly, highly, highly recommend to check out <laughs> um, if you ever need somebody to talk to and you feel like your your, ther your therapist is um, maybe not the right fit for you or something, um, you can call them and just get like a peer support person who will just talk to you about whatever's on your mind, which I think is a really cool, casual and accessible way of supporting each other. Um, and, you know, these are people who have struggled with, like, substance abuse and addiction or, like, mental illness or, like, I don't know, maybe some of them don't have any problems and just are there to, like, help people. But in my experience, everyone has problems. And so, you know, that's another thing on the list is trying to become a peer support advocate. But I could not navigate the training. Um, anyway. Now we're going on a hundred different tangents, so let's just leave it at this and yeah, cut myself off. Um.